Welcome to this lecture about the issue of original, respective, inherited sin compared in Christianity and Islam. Dear friends, I'm very excited to teach and discuss with you about how to witness effectively as a Christian to our Muslim friends. My name is Andreas Maurer and I'm from Switzerland. Now let us look at the comparison of this concept of original or inherited sin in Christianity and Islam. Sometimes while speaking with Muslims I sense their pride to emphasize that they know better about doctrinal issues than Christians. They assert that the Islamic teaching is far superior than the Christian teaching. However, we can ask questions such as what evidence do they have? Is the Islamic concept really true? What exactly does the Quran teach? How can Christians explain this doctrine to Muslims? To be frank, it is not easy to explain and it, I would encourage Christians to carefully study the biblical doctrine. I also have information on this topic in my book, Ask Your Muslim Friend. It is in section 2.4.4. It is important that a Christian first needs to have himself a clear understanding on this doctrine before he or she can explain this to Muslim people. An argument I often heard from Muslim goes like this. We do not inherit sin. All people are born sinless and merely copy the sinful life of adult while they grow up. A person becomes a sinner by trespassing the Sharia. From this argument it is clear that Muslims reject the doctrine of inherited sin. Muslims believe that all human people are born neutral, which means that a child only learns about good and evil as it grows up. But how do you experience this in your everyday life? My observation is that when I look at little children and you give them, for instance, toys to play with, children know how to make a mess with toys. But have you ever seen a child who is automatically cleaning up the place when finished playing? No. The adults have to teach them cleaning up. This is what they need to learn and you do not have to teach them to make a mess. That's what they know already. Therefore children have an inherited inclination to make a mess but they have to be taught to clean up and put things in order. Now dear friends let us look first at the Christian teaching. What does the Bible tell us? The existence of sin in the world is traced back to the first sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were the first people to sin and thereby sin entered the world. We can read this in Genesis chapter 3. Since all mankind is descended from Adam, all are affected by the consequences of his sin. As a result, have inherited an inclination to sin. This is called original sin. Every child at birth is sinless, which means it has not committed any sin yet, but has inherited a nature which is inclined to sin. This is a very important point to realize and where many people have a misunderstanding. The Christian doctrine is that when a baby is born, it has not yet committed a sin, but it has inherited a nature of knowing automatically how to commit sins. Adam and Eve rebelled against God and ignored his instructions. Human beings wanted to decide for themselves what is good for them. This broke their fellowship with God. The consequence is that all descendants of Adam and Eve, in other words all mankind, are spiritually dead 
by nature and thus separated from God. God's love for us is of eternal constancy. He has therefore prepared a way for sins to be forgiven so that mankind can be reconciled to him. God calls all men and women everywhere to repent and thus return to him, accept his offer of pardon and enter into a new relationship with him that includes purifications from sins. Now, dear friends, let us look at the Islamic teaching. What does the Quran tell us? The Quran does not teach the doctrine of original sin, but says that every human is born unburdened, pure and free. Man is thus not in a state of separation from Allah. Some Muslims believe that every person is born as a Muslim and is only separated from Allah when he rejects Islam. Yet the Quran also contains a narrative of the fall in Surah 7 verses 19 to 27. However, contrary to the Bible, Adam and his wife did not try to hide their sins. Instead, they immediately asked Allah for forgiveness. They said, Our Lord, we have wronged our own souls. Thus, Adam and his wife did not sin primarily against Allah, but against themselves. Their transgression of Allah's command changed neither their relationship to Allah nor to each other. Nevertheless, they were banished from paradise by Allah. But he forgave their transgression and therefore their sin had no further consequence for mankind. Islam teaches that humans are morally neutral creatures that can freely choose between good and bad. Although the Quran regrets the inclination to evil, human failure is not considered to be a serious misdeed. In conclusion, I like to say the following. Muslims agree with Christians that Adam and his wife were expelled from paradise. But Muslims hold the view that they do not need salvation and reconciliation with God through Jesus' death on the cross. They think they can erase their sins by their own strength, by doing good works. However, the Bible declares that it is impossible to do good without God's enabling power. Moreover, all good works are not enough to pay for transgressions. Therefore, humans cannot save themselves. Now we can ask Muslims the following questions. Why then were Adam and Eve expelled from paradise when Allah seemingly had forgiven them? Why were they and all their descendants sentenced to live and die on earth? If the sin of Adam and Eve had no consequence, then all people would still live in paradise. Therefore, why do Muslim people, according to their teaching, not live anymore in paradise? Islam has no answer to these crucial questions. In my discussions with Muslims, it became clear that most of them are unaware of this inconsistency and simply accept the Islamic teaching unquestioned. What do you think about what has been said on this topic? Dear friends, what is now your response? Have I made the difference clear? Do you have questions to what has been said? Do you like more discussions? I personally believe that the Christian faith is the true faith. I also am convinced that the Bible is the only true written record about God's history. Thus, the Bible is the word of God. The biblical teaching gives a clear answer why Adam and Eve were expelled from paradise and thus we all live no longer in paradise. What do you think? What is your opinion? We like to hear from you 
and please feel free to contact us. A book which I recommend you to purchase and study is the book I have written, Ask Your Muslim Friend. This book has three main parts. First, it's about Islamic teaching. Secondly, Christian answers to Muslim objections. And thirdly, encounters with Muslims, which are practical guidelines. In addition, I also recommend the booklet Illustrations, Parables, Stories. This booklet contains many practical stories showing the difference in Christianity and Islam. These literature are available in many different languages. We strongly encourage you to subscribe to our lectures and acquire our literature. See you soon again. Good day and God bless you.